I'm going to do politics with COVID-19 at this time. This year's election will be the third and final contest between John Mahama and Nana Dodankwa Ekufado, who becomes Ghana's president. Having lost to John Mahama in the 2012 elections, Ekufado won convincingly in 2016. And as election 2020 approaches, the stakes are even still higher. However, whoever emerges victorious, I should say, serves the final of the constitutionally permissible two terms. But the spread of the coronavirus into the country presents a challenge for both these candidates. In the following report, my colleague Winston Amwa puts the spotlight on the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on politics in Ghana. In February 2020, the NDC launched the Speak Out Tour. The tour, which was to take place in all 16 regions of the country, was to enable its leader and flag bearer, John Mahama, to meet, interact with, and listen directly to the people of Ghana. The party's manifesto team was to accompany Mr. Mahama to take advantage of the tour to listen to the views of the grassroots and incorporate them in the party's manifesto. Having toured the Western North, Ahafu, and Upper East regions, Ghana recorded cases of coronavirus, causing the president to ban public gatherings. All public gatherings, including conferences, workshops, funerals, festivals, political rallies, sporting events, and religious events such as services in churches and mosques have been suspended for the next four weeks. Political campaigns took a hit. This caused the flag bearer of the NDC, John Mahama, to suspend the Speak Out tour. Even though the partial lockdown has been lifted, the ban on public gatherings is still in force. So how has this impacted political activities in this election year? I caught up with political scientists and lecturer at the Political Science Department of the University of Ghana, Dr. Isaac Owusu-Mensa, who in 2016 correctly predicted victory for the NPP. The season of the campaign will be shortened as compared to the previous times. Because as we speak now, if I had not been the COVID-19, NPP will be seriously campaigning now the, for the 149 constituencies that they're going to, we're going to have the primaries on. That will have been the uh, 25th of April, so a few days from now. That's the coming Saturday or so, I guess. And then the NDC probably will have also come out with their running mates by now. But now all this is suspended, and therefore the time of the campaigning we will also reduce. For political parties, the time to campaign will be short, and for them, the shorter the campaign season, the better, because the amount of resources that they will have disbursed during the longer campaign season will be, will be reduced, and therefore everybody will have to be on board. For the General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson Asiedu Nketiah, apart from the NDC's inability to organize parliamentary primaries in some 20 constituencies, the party is for Indeed, we're going to do the uh, next batch of primaries, the Saturday after the president's first directives. Mm. So we had prepared everything, but we immediately uh, held the meeting and announced that health first. So we have suspended all our political activities. However, for General Secretary of the NPP, John Buedu, the effect is enormous. For us in politics, it's because we do mass mobilization, because we do mass gathering, mass meetings. It, it in part is enormous. Uh, uh, as you are aware, we're expected to have a parliamentary primary for where we have sitting members of parliament to the 5th of April. Because we still have in place uh, social distance measures or restrictions mm -hmm. with regards to mass gathering, public gathering, uh, rallies and all that. We have to postpone it indefinitely. We're also expecting by May 2nd to have launched our campaign. So how will the ban on public gatherings affect the political fortunes of the NPP and the NDC? As for the elections and so on. We are not concerned about elections or discussing elections, uh, discussing registration, discussing this, discussing that. Because the same people, if we are saying that the, the health crisis is an emergency, 
And if we are not careful, we don't act properly, it can consume us. We cannot be seen to be discussing what will happen <laughs> after the health crisis, because if we don't act well now, we can be consumed such like that there will not be any tomorrow for us to be talking about. But John Bury is very optimistic. His party will win the 2020 elections. For us in the Digital Patriotic Party, we believe that if elections is held today, we will win. Because we've done so much. The economic conditions of electorates play a major role in the electoral choices. And how the governing party responds to these play an even bigger role. During the lockdown period, government rolled out various packages to support small businesses, the poor and the vulnerable. Dr. Usumenza believes the NPP has taken advantage of this reality. He explains further. Now, I think so far, apart from the lifting of the ban that people have been against, that they are not very happy with all kinds of misfeeling, all the steps that the government have taken so far, people have appreciated it, except this one. But as the expert always keeps saying, we don't know and I don't have all the information. So if the government also get the lifting right, that is really going to be their advantage. What I was a bit surprised was that I think NDC should have also come on board, strongly on board, not necessarily doing their own thing, because all the resources that the government, the MPP or the government is putting on the ground, it's not from the MPP, it's from the government. So NDC should have joined them in the distribution of the food. We are also here to help the distribution of it, so that will reduce the strength that, and the, or the advantage that the incumbent government will have. But unfortunately, it didn't happen that way. So incumbent government have really have a lot of advantage to its side in terms of distribution of their resources. And normally when it goes to elections, people reward political parties for what they have done and what they have not done. Another factor that is central to the upcoming election is the voters register. The Electoral Commission has been emphatic that there cannot be a credible election without a new voter register. Director of Electoral Service at the EC is Dr. Sribo Kwaku. As far as the commission is concerned, uh, we are saying that we can only ensure credible register with a new register. Okay, but, 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 that, but that, that brings back my question, and this is, this is relevant, if you, if you may. In the midst of the uncertainties brought on by COVID-19, nobody knows when this is going to pass. Is the EC at least now reconsidering that and saying, in the, a push come to show, we will have to shelve this and just do limited? Is that something you are considering? Uh, man, then can I also ask a question? Please do. Yeah, in the, uh, in the uh, face of the, uh, the COVID-19, are you also thinking of not having election in 2020? I, I don't know. I mean, the <laughs> something that the Electoral Commission has to so do. Anybody in the Electoral Commission, knowing the resources that we have, knowing the situation of the register, And I certainly have company when I cover my mouth and my nose like this, just like you should if you have company wherever you are. Winston Amwa, uh, producer of that short documentary, joins me here in the studio. Tell you what, it's a very long one. Uh, we've just given you a part of it. Winston will tell us, give us an idea what's supposed to be in the rest that you haven't seen. But it certainly will be on our YouTube link. We'll urge you to go to look at it. Winston, you're welcome. Thank you very much, Kifty. So let's start with what we haven't seen yet that's also contained in this uh, mini documentary we see the implications you know the story the background and we see the implications the possible implications for election 2020 given coronavirus and all what else is in the reports that we haven't seen well so that's a whole uh, you know bit about um, elections and whether or not we need a new voters register mm. you know haven't talked about uh, the effect or the possible effect on the electoral fortunes we then get into whether or not the Electoral Commission would still need to compile a new voters register for the upcoming election. For Johnson Asir Nketiah, he still believes that, look, we're talking about uh, after the pandemic, but what if we're consumed by the pandemic? Mm -hmm. So for him, he would prefer that we stop talking about you know, issues to do with uh, you know, life after COVID-19. He wants all of us to actually you know, still focus on dealing with COVID-19. And once we deal with COVID-19, we'll be able to know what to do next. That's I say Yes, that's I say But for John Boyd, he says that um, there's no way we can go into election 2020 without a new voters register. So the focus, it appears that the focus of the NPP is to, hey, 
just push right ahead and get the voters register done. Whereas the NDC believes that, let's take a look at the coronavirus, deal with it, and then move on with our lives from there. So yes, when I spoke to um, the two general secretaries, um, Johnson has said in Ketia believes that this is not a time to be talking about election this and election that. Okay. When it comes to John Boydou, he makes he answers the question and says, well, about 1.2 million Ghanaians would turn 18 this year. <laughs> and you expect those people to be giving a chance to vote. Mm. How do they vote? They can only do so if they are registered. registered. And so for him, it has to be uh, a sort of a new register. Now that could be in compiling a totally new one mm -hmm. or going for a limited registration exercise. I see. Some of them have even been talking about an indefinite postponement of um, political activity. So obviously, the NPP cannot go on with its primaries. Uh, the NDC, former President John Mahama, has indicated that they have put certain things on hold. Did they at any point in the documentary talk about the alternatives in place? I mean, assuming election 2020 has to be done in a time of coronavirus are they thinking of any alternatives in terms of even their own campaigning how they reach out to people etc exactly and that's a very important question because again for us you don't get here deal with COVID-19 deal with it we don't know how, for him he says we don't know what would happen okay. we are not sure whether we'll be alive after COVID-19 those are his statements. We don't know whether we'll be alive. So let us deal with it. When we are done dealing with it, we can then begin to think about life after it. But let us not, uh, like our people will say, you don't stand in hands and say that you're actually getting them off your skin. Okay. They still will be there. So for him, it's the same case. But for you know, John Good, he says that the MPP would not want to stay in office one more day Pass their time without an election asking them to do so. <laughs> and so looks elections like, will be done. It looks like interesting times ahead. But what sort of feedback has come on the back of this report? Well, there's been uh, you know, great feedback there. I mean, and, and you know, even as uh, John Mahama uh, spoke yesterday, he makes uh -huh. reference to uh, you know, the fact that for one of the leading members of the NPP, mm -hmm. and you, you had John Boydou, okay, I mean, I've talked about John Boydou's comments that there mm -hmm. can't be an election without a new voter right. register, certainly capturing his attention. Lots of people have been reacting to it. Uh, they've talked about how, uh, you know, they think that the issue of the new voters register should be put aside for now. But I'm also being told right now that even, uh, you know, within a lot of um, an NDC WhatsApp group discussions and other uh, things, the general consensus is that there's a the likelihood that there would be a compilation of a new voters register, but that would be a limited one. And so uh, the time to start preparations certainly should be now. Finally, uh, Winston, before you go, you talk to political scientists in this documentary and uh, you get their perspective. I'm interested to find out from your own perspective what the scientist perspective to politics has been on our voting patterns or on our voting trends, uh, if there is any that's shared in this documentary. Well, so um, for the political scientists I spoke to, and this is uh, Dr. Isaac Owusu-Mensah, who correctly predicted victory for the NPP in 2016. He's talked about how people would always look at the things that are being done. They would reward those who have been there for them, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't you know, reward those who haven't been there for them. Another thing is that when it comes to politics, and so he says that based on how the NPP has gone with the handling of COVID-19, mm -hmm. um, it looks like they have the advantage. And so he would have expected the NDC to have joined the NPP in, say, the sharing of food. Because, I mean, it's not NPP's money. It's Ghana's money. Mm -hmm. So if it's government of Ghana funding or funds, it means all can join to make it work. And the thing about elections also is the fact that you always would look for alternatives. You say politics is the posing of choices for people to choose. And so you always would look for choices. And if people are very comfortable with uh, what they currently have, they will stick with it. If they are not, they certainly would vote that uh, government They're out. Changed. So uh, for him, uh, he thinks that if the lifting of the lockdown doesn't go well according to plan, it could affect the NPP. All right. But if it does, bingo for them. Winston, thank you very much. I'll end that conversation with this message that just came in. It says, to be frank, 
under this unfortunate situation, if anyone is prior prioritizing politics above this tsunami, then God save us as voters. Is there no alternative to the compilation of this new voters register? Malik is sending us that message from Kumase. Malik, thank you for sending in. And Winston, thanks so much for coming You're and welcome. thanks for that documentary. Winston Amwada, my colleague here, has been hosting uh, uh, Affront and also a part of our Super Morning Show team.